I produced a video a while ago on the Eversolar TL1500 basically talking about the output relays. Now uh, with grid tie inverters it's imperative you don't go over volts which means don't attach too many panels to it and if you want your inverter to last quite a long time A don't go over volts B run it less than full whack so don't put quite as many panels on as you may want to do and the third thing is mount it in the shade with good ventilation so don't put it in the loft of your house don't put it up put it on the front of the house in full sun because it will get very very hot and then it will switch off at full current through it being over temperature and that means the relays are switching off full DC current and that's how we can damage it so over volts over current over temperature all three of them are definite no-nos but here we go this is to pick up on that last video because this video is going to be entitled something like how to test a grid tie whereas the other one was entitled only about the ever solar so if you want to test a grid tie and you don't want to go to the faff of attaching it to all your panels or you've got your panels running and you've got another one and you want to test it or you're about to buy one and you could take a few bits of test equipment with you to test it before you hand over the readies so let's just have a look at this that there is a mains connection okay and the white plug blue the black wire goes to this which is a variac which is a variable transformer now it's not an isolation transformer so the output of that you are connected to the main still so the output of that variable transformer which can start at 0 volts goes off to this that's a site transformer 250 or 240 to 110 now last time I used quite an esoteric transformer which had all sorts of weird tappings 380 440 240 110 all sorts of things and I've realized that nobody's gonna have one of those so I've dug out this site transformer so effectively we're putting the output of the variac into the output of that 110 volt transformer that's 110 volt output so output of the variac goes into the output of the 110 so for instance if you're putting 100 volts into that output of the yellow transformer then with it being a 2 to 1 ratio you'll get 200 volts out and it's an isolation transformer so we're not connected to the mains and that's vitally important for this test because we're taking a, making a DC supply from the mains but we're also connecting the output of the grid tie to the mains so we don't want any round and about circuits going on so the output which is effectively the mains input to that site transformer is it's that cable there and it goes to that four-way plug socket and what would be the input to that is that white wire that goes all the way around and is connected to a rectifier and there's another one and that's that will handle up to 400 volts that rectifier and I've put a smoothing capacitor across it let me just go and see what value that smoothing capacitor is 
it's 30 microfarads and then the output of the rectifier positive and negative goes to that connection which goes to that meter and it also goes down these solar cables to this grid tie and it's a grow what now I think there's a fault with this so what we're going to do first of all I'm going to take the top off so we can see the screen properly then hopefully we can have the grid inverter screen and the meter showing the DC volts all in shot now there's a million screws holding these on so I've taken the opportunity to take them off to start with I'll just remove the earth off the case so we can get the lid out of the way let's see how we get on with that we can see the variac just about so here we've got on this grow what we've got the DC input positive and negative and we've got the mains input live and neutral okay let's see what happens we want the DC to be connected first so as you can see DC volts are going up let's connect the mains and the isolators off so I'll turn this down so the isolators on now we've got something happening on the screen no AC connection okay now I know there's AC connection so we've got an error on this machine it can't measure the AC so I'm just going to put this meter here and that's set on um, 700 volts AC and just to prove 238 volts so we do have mains there but it's not getting through that I think is the main sensor so we've got a problem there somewhere there is a fuse down there that I have tested before that will be a mains fuse but there's nothing wrong with that anyway you get the idea you're creating a variable DC supply from a variac an isolation transformer a rectifier and a smoothing capacitor and you're feeding the inverter DC side from that and then you're creating a load and a signal by attaching the output back to the mains let's find another inverter and show it working right we've got an ever solar here and if you notice I've piggybacked a different set of relays there's a different relay there piggybacked onto one of the damaged relay bases so I've chopped the relay out brought the wires out and I put a resistor in series with the coil to make sure that the coil resistance is about 180 ohms and that the relay still works properly well, I think I might uh, just do a close-up of that
afterwards. We'll do the test first. So we've got the uh, DC connected down there. We've got the mains connected there. DC in. And AC on. And what does this start at? About 125 volts. Now this will be a G83 inverter so it'll take a while to start. We're putting 160 volts into it as you can see see it's counting down on its seconds anyway it's counting down but I think it's acting up I've turned the volts up a bit to 225 but it was restarting But it's getting there now. Maybe it just needed to uh, warm up because there you go, it's gone back to 179 again. So I've brought that transformer, wired that up, just to see if that makes any difference. If you notice, it's quite quiet. So we've used that transformer to feed this. And it seems to be going. Obviously there was a bit of interference with that other transformer making the DC not very smooth. So this is a view of uh, one of the output relays with the top off. And we're down to four seconds now. Two, one, go. and it's running so they, they switch on and off and on and off but now it's running let's just come down to this there we go and we started off at 200 volts and now there's a load on it where's the um, there we go it's 126 volts which is a bit low need to keep it up a bit anyway whilst we're here as I promised let's just have a look at this there's the piggyback relay with the resistor these two blue wires let me get a screwdriver a nicely insulated one these two blue wires here are the uh, from the original coil, they're the connections to the original coil and I made sure that the coil is disconnected so these two go to the new coil and then these blobby bits let's just zoom out just a little bit these blobby bits here are hot glue and where I've just soldered wires to the original contacts and brought them out in the right order and this I think this is a 12 volt relay and it's double pole single throw normally open so that both sets of contacts are open when it's in a passive state and when it's energized both contacts connect so that's it and as I said earlier it's important to get the coil uh, resistance correct just so you don't overload any sensitive circuitry in there but the main thing is how to test on the bench <laughs>